been about three months, guys. Uh, that's a little bit long for a YouTuber to take a break for. I've been fishing a lot. I have probably at least 20 tournaments recorded from this summer, and I'm gonna start releasing those things like crazy, but this video is going to be a pretty much one of the most absurd tournaments that I've ever fished. I've never had anything like this happen before, so please watch the whole video, listen to my explanation. Uh, on top of it just being one of the most ridiculous things to ever happen in a tournament to me, or really ever, I, in my opinion, uh, I actually catch my biggest tournament bag of my life and my biggest my biggest tournament bass ever in my life and my biggest smallmouth ever in my entire life. So it should be a freaking show guys. Thank you for waiting me out if I you know I haven't posted a video in so long. So if you're still there, still out there watching these videos, thank you guys. And there's gonna be a lot more to come. So if you're not already subscribed and you like tournament bass fishing videos, hit that subscribe button, but let's jump right into it. Big one. Yep. It's a big one. Dude, oh my god. Oh my god. No, 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 we're, we're good. We're calm, we're calm, we're calm. She's coming up, she's coming up, she's coming up, she's coming up. Get her, get her, Matt, get her. Feels a little. Eh, maybe not. But we'll take her. Thank you. 
Really quick, I want to make note of the fact that there are a lot of boats that are getting pretty close to us. We are not making our way into these other boats. We're not trying to mess up anyone's spot. We're actually spot locked down. All four of these fish came within about maybe five to 10 casts of each other. And all these other boats are converging on us after we whacked all these fish. So we're not poaching anyone's spot. Everyone else started moving in on us after they saw us start netting some giants. So that's what happened there. And this fish that you're about to see is an absolute, absolute freaking hoss. Biggest smallmouth that I've ever caught. And I'm gonna play out the whole fight. It's gonna be long, so if you wanna skip through it, go ahead. But this is a freaking giant smallmouth. He's coming this way now. Dude, oh my god. Are you kidding me? You're gonna bully it, dude. Oh my god. Is that a f***ing musky or something? It's fighting just like a small arrow. Dude, oh my god. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> You're like, yeah, right? It's not a flash. It's a small one. No, I'm not. She's running. <laughs> Dude, holy That's a large mouth. Look how big his mouth is. That's your size. Yeah, like big size. Oh my god. Dude, that has to be like five and a half hours. <laughs> it's gotta be like five and a half hours. You've gotta be fing shitting me. Huh? No. One hit. The first little one did. My second fish. Hit it on the fall. All the other ones I've just been barely ticking it off the grass as slow as I can. 
I like barely even just tap, tap, tap in it. I saw that one on the grass. Mm -hmm. Just hold on. There we go. Boom, baby. It's another stud. Yeah, that one popped right off. Alright. What's up? Feels a little bit, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a big one, dude. That's a goal right there. I know. We need, we need four pounder or something, right? But just to make sure, you never know, man. Stuff can happen. Put this one back. And then this one's definitely the next one to go. You can put a tag in it before you No, I'll know. Yeah, I'll know this one. Big one. Maybe. Better one. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That's, that's 20 pounds right there. Oh, it popped right out? That's like another 20 pounder. I think that'll put us over 20 right there. It was a crazy net job or anything, but just like, I've had two that have popped off though right after you got them in the net. That's a big one. Big one? That's gonna help, I think. <laughs> that's gonna be a big pain in the dick, but I think that's gonna help. Okay, yeah, that's that's a, a half pound at least, I think, upgrade. Oh, that's at least two. Yeah, that's close to four. <laughs> there you go, buddy.
You gonna call Shit. this one out too, fucker? Shit, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's our smallest. The one I just got smaller than that one. I don't think, yeah, I don't think it's gonna help any. It's not a little though. <laughs> Another three pounder. Hit the spot lock, hit the spot lock. Just keep him pinned. Where's he at? Oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> He's probably close to 3 2, actually. <laughs> he ain't gonna help either, though. I don't think. That, that ain't help, is he? Oh, so this, this is where it all came crashing down. We have a freaking mega bag of smallmouth on the boat. Like I said, this is the biggest bag of tournament bass I've ever caught in my life. And actually at this point in time, I thought that we had a lot less than we actually ended up having. I thought we might've had a little bit over 20 pounds. So we were pretty hyped. We thought we had a chance at the win. We knew we had an absolute monster bass in the boat. We have to make the run back through the Miracle Mile, which is about a five mile stretch of one of the most treacherous areas that you're ever gonna see in your life just because it's super populated. It's right in downtown Detroit and it's got these break walls on the side with all these freaking massive yachts going through it, pushing out these giant wakes. And there's basically three footers coming at you from every single directions on a good day, which I mean, today was actually not that bad. There's probably three footers coming at us from every direction. So we left with about two hours of spare and we, I mean, we left ourselves amp, an ample amount of time to get back to the ramp with plenty of time to spare. We took it as slow as we could. We get to the end of the Miracle Mile after getting absolutely freaking bullied by waves. And I opened the live well and our biggest fish, that six plus pounder was belly up. I mean, she wasn't quite dead yet. We spent about 25 minutes trying to revive that fish. Matthew was idling me. I held that fish in the water as we idled up the river, just trying to get water to go through her gills and stuff. Couldn't do it. I mean, that fish was gone and I, we were freaking devastated. Not because the tournament, we we're gonna lose a quarter pound or half pound or whatever the penalty is because that's a trophy smallmouth. And it, if you guys bass fish, you know, no one is out there trying to kill fish. That is the absolute last thing that anyone's trying to do, especially with a fish of that caliber. So. I, I was just freaking pissed at this point just because I killed that fish, but we still knew we had a good shot. So we started making our way back down the river. Now, once we get to the weigh-in site, we have about 40 minutes until three o'clock, which is the weigh-in time, and our fish were starting to take a turn for the worse. I mean, a lot of them had been in the live well for a long time. It's a super hot day outside. They're small mouth, and we're catching them out of relatively deep water. So they're not doing so hot, especially if they're, after that stressful long run through the Miracle Mile. We tried to get the fish weighed a little bit early. The scales were not open until three o'clock, which is understandable. There's a lot of tournament trails that will not weigh your fish early. So I, there was nothing we could do about that. We waited it out. We pulled the boat out a tiny bit early. There was about 10 minutes until the weigh-in was supposed to commence. We ran up to the front of the scales and they would not hand a bag out until three o'clock, which I thought was a little absurd because they have holding tanks up there for a reason, in my opinion. They would not allow us to put our fish in the holding tank. They would not hand out a bag until three o'clock and you had to use their weigh-in bags. So I stood up there, waited for a bag. Matthew stood back with the fish. 
by the time we got a weigh-in bag, our fish were looking absolutely terrible. At least, at least another one was. I mean, three of them were okay, the one was dead, and our other big fish was absolutely just looking beat to crap. So we wanted to weigh this fish as soon as possible. No. Okay. Hey, Matt, uh, Bill, Bill Matthews and Matt Davis. Boat number. Boat number ten. Matthews and Davis. How many fish, guys? Uh, five fish. How many smallmouth? All smallmouth. Five smallmouth. One's dead. One dead fish. Any over five pounds? The one that's dead. Can't, can't weigh that one. Yeah. Bad, right? Yeah, that was biggest. He looks bigger than that. Yeah, he's a lot bigger than him. Right. He's fatter. He's a big one. You can only weigh one of these two, either that one or the one that's in the bottom. This, you can only uh, weigh one dead fish. Wait, dead. There's only one dead, this is the only dead one, the other one's alive. That one's still, that one is still alive. Maybe he's dead now. Dead now. One dead to one away. One dead to go. That, that, that one. one. Big one. That's a fucking ten. So stupid. What's that? Hold on. Ten. Hold on there. Here you go. Here you go. Matt, Matt Williams. What's your guy's name? Matt Williams. Yeah. Oh, okay. William. William Matthews and Matthew Davis. You guys have one clipped in here? Yeah, well, yeah, he clipped something. So you got taken dead fish? Like, do you have somewhere to make a pile of fish? That's our bag of fish. Yeah, we know. Okay. Weigh it again. Yeah. 1839. 1839. Thank you. Can you sign over there, please? All right, one of you, I need you to sign here. Your name will hit the green sign confirm. I might take your glasses off. Uh, we finally get up there. The fish was alive literally three minutes. Like, right when we put it in the bag, that fish was alive and well. I mean, not, okay. The fish was alive. It was not well. We ran up there, put him in the freaking box, and I told the guy we had one dead fish because that's honestly what I would have considered it about two minutes ago. Didn't look at it. And as you saw, they would not let us weigh that fish because it was. It was dead at that point. By the time we got it up there and he looked at that fish, it was dead. And there was nothing we could do about it. I mean, like I said, not every tournament trail is gonna weigh your fish early. There are some out there. The College Bass Tour actually did weigh fish early in several of their tournaments. They opened the scales an hour or a half an hour early because fish get stressed out. You have 45 to 60 boats fishing some of these college tournaments and there's no staggered weigh-in. So you have 45 to 60 boats all coming in at the same time. There are guys that are waiting an hour to weigh fish. We were lucky that we were one of the first ones up there. I mean, there was about 10 other people waiting in line with the same issue as we had. Ours just was the most detrimental because we had such a big bag. Like I said, biggest bag I ever caught in my life. So we could only weigh four of our five fish and we weighed over 18 pounds, over 18 and a half pounds, I think it was. I, I actually just forgot, I just edited it. But over 18 pounds with four fish and our second biggest fish was 5.09 pounds. We weighed it on a handheld scale afterwards. And the big fish, we weighed it on a handheld scale as well, 6.39 pounds. So we had two absolute giants anchoring our bag, massive kicker smallmouth, and they both died. 
So the moral of the story is fish care is absolutely paramount. There is a rule in this tournament that I think contradicts what should be done in bass tournaments. I mean, I'm not blaming the tournament trail. There are things that we could have done to help our smallmouth live. We could have took it slower through the Miracle Mile. We should have had fin clips or fizzed our fish because they were caught out of deep water. They were acting a little bit funny in the live well and I'm sure that wasn't good for them. We did not have a fizz kit with us. That's on us. That, that's why I'm not trying to place blame on the tournament trail, but the thing about the rule that they have in place that really just doesn't make any sense to me is the fact that you can only weigh one dead fish. That's what I want to break down really quick. So, in theory, that rule sounds like it's going to keep more fish alive. Only one dead fish. It sounds like you're not going to kill as many fish. But in reality, most tournament trails, if you have a dead fish, you cannot cull that fish out. So if you have a live well malfunction or something, you have five dead fish, that's what you're stuck with. All your fish died. I'm sorry. That's how it goes. And no one's out there trying to kill fish. It's not like people want to kill fish and don't want to be able to cull fish. But every other tournament trail, you get docked a quarter to a half pound, depending on the trail, and you can't cull that fish out. It's stuck with you. This tournament trail, you get docked, I think it's a quarter pound, same as pretty much every tournament trail, but you can cull dead fish out of your sack. So we had five fish that we put in our live wells. Every time we caught a bigger fish, we would cull them out like a normal tournament. And like I said, we didn't have any problems. When we were in St. Clair, all of our fish were alive, healthy, and well before the Miracle, before the miracle Mile. And what happened was, this is the suggested rule. You should keep six, seven, eight, nine, ten fish in your live well. I'm sure they don't want you to keep ten because that's a little bit absurd, but there are people that do that in these tournament trails. But they want you to keep more than five bass in your live well in case one or two of them die because then you could just take the dead one out and weigh your five alive ones or four alive ones and one dead one because that's what the tournament trail allows. So in my opinion, that's asking to kill more fish. That's not what we want to do as tournament anglers. I mean, you should not be able to stuff more fish in an already crowded live well just because all oh, one or two or three might die. I mean, and, and of course, that's not that's also not the intention of that rule, but that's what it kind of leads to. It's a weird loophole in that rule that no other tournament trail uses that leads to people keeping more fish in their live well, which results in more dead fish. After this tournament, there were a ton of smallmouth that were floating and just all discombobulated on the shoreline. Luckily, someone went through from the Western fishing team, shout out to Western, and he went through and fizzed all those fish because the, the fish care in this tournament was just not good. The way that it was handled was just not the proper way to handle a bass fishing tournament and I was just deeply disappointed in the way that it turned out. Like I said, not because we lost the tournament. At the time I was extremely pissed off, but like I said, there were things that we could have done better that would have helped our fish live, but that's really just not what I'm trying to get at here. What I'm trying to get at is everyone should do the best to keep the fish alive. That goes from the tournament angler to the tournament director to just anyone fishing out there. I mean, at this point I'm honestly rambling. I don't know if I made any sense there, but hopefully you guys understood. Maybe you guys are on my side, maybe you guys are against me. Like I said, it's it was bad on both sides, but just that rule doesn't make sense to me. I think that it contradicts itself. It leads to more dead fish. In my opinion, it should be a quarter or a half pound deduction per dead fish flat across the board. You can't call a dead fish. A dead fish should stay in your live well. You don't want to be letting dead fish go in the lake. You don't want a basket full of dead fish at the launch. That's not what we're trying to do as tournament anglers. So long story short, long story long, we ended up in fifth place with 18 and a half pounds or whatever it was for four fish because we could not weigh our second biggest bass. It just did not turn out the way that you would expect one of the best days of your life to turn out. It just turned sour so quick. But you, you know, you live and you learn. There's gonna be more tournaments. Uh, I don't wanna get ahead of myself here, but we actually were able to bounce back in a big way the very next weekend. I don't know if that's gonna be the next video I release. That's probably gonna be a little bit farther down the line, but I had some serious redemption come the week after this tournament. But thank you guys for watching today's video. Uh, means a lot to me. Like I said, I'm going to be posting so many more videos. I've been out of the game and I have absolutely no excuses uh, other than the fact that I've been lazy. So I'm going to be posting a lot more videos. I have filmed tournament after tournament. I fished more tournaments than I ever have probably this summer and I've had a freaking blast doing it. So thank you guys for watching and I will catch you guys next time.